If you follow this secret, you'll probably get a much better landscape and one step closer to photorealism. So are you ready? That secret is to use the specular channel. Now, don't click off, I know what you're thinking, to never ever adjust the specular value since that will break PBR. But in our case, I feel like we have to since your landscape probably looks more like plastic with all that glossiness than it does an actual landscape. So by adjusting our specular value, we can get it to look more like this, which is an actual landscape. So to do that, I'm back in the material we created from the last two videos. If you don't know, this is part three in a creating realistic landscape tutorial series. In part one of that series, we went over how you can hide texture repetition. Then in part two, we took that same material and turned that into an auto material. Now, you don't have to watch those tutorials to get the gist of this one, but I suggest you do since there are pretty helpful skills to know. But for now, I want to add specular changes to my grass. But first, I have to hook up specular right here because otherwise we wouldn't see any change. So I'm going to go into grass. And right now I'm blending between two different grasses, normal grass and dry grass. But for now, just to make things easier, I'm going to go with normal grass like that and it is right here where we're going to make the specular so i'm going to go move all these nodes just a little bit back like that and hit apply so this is what your landscape probably looks like right now with no changes to specular so obviously not very good we have a very apparent glossiness and this literally just feels like a plastic cutout of a landscape, not an actual one. So to change that, I'm going to go back into my landscape and actually my material function, which is connected to my landscape. And let's make the first adjustment. So I'm going to use a clamp and clamp it from 0 to 0 0.5. This will just bring the values down since we want to decrease the specular. We don't want to increase the specular. And by default, the specular is right now at 0.5. So we want to be below this value, and that's what this clamp is doing. And we're actually going to get our specular not from the roughness, but from the red channel of my two textures, of the color texture. And we might have an issue now, and that is, we are right now blending between two textures of different sizes, which is a technique we went over in part one to high texture repetition. So one thing I could do is add a lerp node, grab the distance from there, put it in there, and then lerp between the two red values. Or I can simply mask out a red value right here. So go component mask and make sure only red is checked and feed that into there like that. And then I'm gonna go take this output and put it into specular. To actually see the changes we're making, like a before and after, I'm gonna use a static switch parameter. And I'm gonna call this is custom spec question mark. So if custom spec is false, then we're going to default to our specular, which is 0.5. Or if it is true, then we're going to use our new custom specular. Connect it like that and hit apply. So I'm back in the landscape and I have opened my material instance right here. So I'm just going to move it off to the side so we can see what is happening. And right now, custom spec is turned off. So this is what we had before. And this is our new specular. I mean, the colors are actually noticeable now. They're not washed out by white. And this is just so much better. Here before it was really gross, had a white tint. Now the colors are noticeable and it feels like an actual landscape. Although what I like to do is just bring down the specular just a little bit more. And we could do that by simply adding in a multiply node. So I'm gonna hold down M, left click, bring in multiply. Hold down one, left click to bring in a scalar. Right click, convert to parameter, and let's call this spec amount. And by default, I'm gonna set this to 0 0.5, plug it all up like this. And what this multiply will do is just bring down the brightness of this clamp. And we can actually view our nodes by right clicking and going to start preview. So here, it's kind of still bright. And then after the multiply, start preview node, it's a lot darker. So this should give us a better effect. And we also have a control to see how much specular we want. So drag it like that, hit apply. Okay, so this was before, and now this is with custom spec. 
So before, after, and that is just immediately an improvement. But if you're really concerned with breaking PBR, really the only time this glossiness issue is causing a problem is when we are viewing the landscape at an extreme angle. So when we're viewing the landscape like this, if we're viewing the landscape straight down, we can see that there really is no issue. So if you're concerned about breaking PBR, we can isolate those two instances. So that's how custom spec is only affecting the landscape when we view it at sharp angles using a Fresnel node. So I tend not to use this, but if you are concerned with PBR, I'll show you how to do it anyways. The best way to explain what the Fresnel node does is to actually just show it. So I'm gonna right click, type in Fresnel, right click again, go to start preview node. Okay, so now you might immediately be thinking, oh, that's just overlaying a texture onto a spear. But if we rotate around the spear, you can see that is staying the same. And that is because the angles of the object when they are pointing directly at the camera are the darkest. And when the angles start to slowly point away from the camera, it turns into white and eventually pure white. So we get a kind of gradient effect depending on the angles relative to the camera. To better demonstrate how Fresnel will affect my landscape, I just plugged in Fresnel into my specular. And then if I go into my map, go down under lip, buffer visualization, I can literally just see the specular values by clicking on specular. So now we can see that at sharp angles, we get white. And then if I look straight down, we get blackish. And this is just a good way now to lurk between the different specular values. So white will be our custom spec and going straight down will be our default specular. So we will get the best of both worlds. And if I zoom in right now, we can see that my normal map is actually affecting that Fresnel effect. I do not want that because that will give us some weird breakup. So to fix that, I will go into where my Fresnel is, right click and type in vertex normal. What this is going to do is tell my Fresnel to only take into account the vertices of my landscape and ignore the normal maps. So plug it up like that, hit compile. Now we get what we want and that is just a really nice smooth fall off the more angled we look and if we look down we get blackish. Okay, I keep saying blackish because right now the middle here isn't pure black. It's kind of like an off gray and we don't want that, but we can fix it using a cheap contrast. So select that and I found a value of 0 0.13 to be good. So now if I right click start preview, we can see that we're actually getting black and we're actually getting a white value right there. So now I think the fall off is way too far. So I found a good value within Fresnel to be 0 0.7 within the exponent. Okay, there we go. So now that my Fresnel effect is done, and if you're wondering how I got these values, I just kind of played with it until I found something that looked nice. You can also go through here, convert these to parameters and just play around and see what looks nice for your scene. But with that being said, I'm gonna add in a new lerp node and set A to 0 0.5, which is our default, and B to the custom specular we created. And then I'm gonna use this, the result into alpha, to choose where those two are. And then I'm gonna hook this up into is custom spec and hook is custom spec up into specular. And hit apply. And right now I feel like my specular is still just not low enough. So I'm gonna go open up my landscape inst and turn that spec amount to 0 0.35. Okay, much better. Now I'm liking that result. Okay, what you need to do now is go through all the other materials in your landscape and just add the specular there. So what I'm gonna do is just highlight everything, control C, come down here to my dry grass, and let's move everything back, and control V it there. So I'm just gonna drag it out from there again. Drag is custom spec into specular. And for spec amount, I'm gonna call this dry grass specular amount. And because I love to keep all my parameters organized, I'm gonna go down here and select dry grass. Same thing up here, I'm gonna call this grass spec amount and select the group as grass. I'm also gonna do this to my cliff. So select everything again, control C, go into my main landscape, find where my cliff material is, double click to go into it. 
and control V right here. Oop. I need to make some room first. Then control V. Plug this up to there like that. And rename this to cliff spec amount and make the group cliff. Hit apply. And don't forget to bring back that dry grass into my grass material by dragging from the blend attribute and putting it into result. So hit apply and hit apply on your main landscape if that's available. So this is after and this was before. So before, after. And that is just such an amazing improvement. Like our everything just feels right. It just feels right. Beforehand, it was this. Gross. Now it's this. And also, you might have noticed that I just have one Boolean parameter that is controlling all the specs of my material. And if you don't know, that's because if I go back into my landscape, if you have a, my grass, if you have a parameter and it's the same name as another parameter, then they will share the same properties. So that's how these two are actually the same variable. Same with the cliff. This is also the same variable because both of these are being added into my main graph. So that's how I have one variable to just control the specular on all my materials. If you liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe and hopefully you got something out of it. If you wanna see more tutorials then you can check out my channel below and that's about it, so goodbye.